morning, good evening, or good afternoon, depending on what side of the pond you're on. And welcome to an extra special edition of Across the Pitch. My name is Phil Kennedy, and I'm here with Tony Robinson, who is uh, going to play the uh, the co-host, co-guest role today. Uh, as we're going to talk about the uh, recent happenings at Accrington Stanley. And uh, if you've listened to our last few episodes, you know that for the past couple months, Tony has been in England, uh, seeing the matches in person, uh, hanging out at Coley's Bar and uh, running up quite a tab, I understand. <laughs> uh, how, how are you doing, Tony? Uh, tell, tell us, uh, you know, other than uh, some disappointing results, uh, how is the uh, the trip over uh, back home going for you? Uh, hello, Phil. It's nice to be with you again, of course. Um, yes, it's, 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 we've been here nine weeks and it's gone, got so quick, gone so quickly. Um, you know, seeing six matches at the, at the WAM, um, and, uh, everyone is, uh, has been enjoyable in, in, in being there, but so, the results haven't always gone our way. But, uh, for me, um, I still go away enjoying the, the day because I know I'm there and everything uh, you're, you're at the stadium. Um, so I, the, you know, when you lose, you're upset, but I'm not quite as upset as some of the fans because of the fact that it's, uh, I know uh, I'll be coming back to North America and then rely on, on I follow. And, and as, as good as that is, Phil, as you know, it's not the same as being live. And, and some of the things that we'll, I'll touch on late, later in the, uh, in the show is things that you learn and see and hear being here, being at the stadium. So yeah, it's um, the, uh, my liver is telling me it's time to come home and so, <laughs> and so is my, uh, so is my wallet. But, uh, anyway, I mean, you didn't, you don't come over here to, to sit in a, in the house and not do anything. You go to the football and you go to the pubs, uh, and you consume some of the real ales. And, uh, I, for one, have been trying to do my part in, uh, in all those areas. So, uh, so, so I, I should have bought a uh, bull and brewery stock before you went over is what, what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> well, yes, and then and more houses, and uh, there's a few that we've uh, we've tried, and uh, uh, I haven't had a bad ale. I've had some really good ones, but there's no. It's like a football match. There's no real bad ones. There are some just better than others, you know. But uh, before we before we Tony, get into before we before yep. we get into football, and you, you mentioned I follow, and, and this is one thing that uh, that I always see on I follow that that's always kind of. It's been something that I've wondered about. Uh, so when you see the uh, the Wham Stadium, uh, you'll notice that uh, I th- believe it's on. I want to say the uh, west side of the stadium. That there's like a, a hill, and there's some uh, some brick buildings that look like they might be like brick. Uh, apartment complexes or, or something like that and what what surprises me is that it looked like from uh, from those brick houses that you might be able to get up on some of the roofs and actually uh, uh, see the, the game from those does, does that happen at all um well it, you can but you don't you don't see as much as you would think um those houses are behind the eric wally stand and uh, which is opposite to the main stand and, and too much. If you're in the main stand, um, uh, when you, uh, if you to your right is the way stand, uh, way end, and that's the open end. And that's the, uh, where all the away fans stand. And behind okay. that is, is a, is a hill called the coppice and which is at the top of having to parade. And, and, and it's really beside the, the old peel park ground and, and ends the term, the coppice end, because that's, uh, uh, that you know the way and backs onto the coppice, and and of course the uh, uh, the where the home fans are and the ultras and the singing and the excellent job that they do in the flags is at the Clayton end because that end of it flat faces towards uh, uh, Clayton, which is when you leave Accrington, uh, you head into Clayton. So um, yeah, it's um, uh, that's what's unique about that. Is you can get it, and they're just terraced out. They're well, I say terraced houses. They're they're uh, they're uh, two story houses that are just sort of built on on the side of the hill where they can overlook the stadium. So, uh, yeah, if you got if you live there, you could uh, certainly 
uh, look out your window and watch watch the matches. So that's pretty. That's the lay of the land. That, that, so I got my retirement plan then. <laughs> you, yeah, you do. Yeah, just start saving up. Just saving up. Um, I well, imagine that those uh, those houses are are made with the uh, the nori bricks. Well, I'm not sure that because the nori factories are, uh, has been uh, has been gone for a while, so they're probably not nori's as they call them, and which is uh, Accrington was famous for. Uh, but um, uh, there are some Norais around, and I'll tell you, okay. they are, they are, um, they're very hard and very uh, 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 thick. Uh, you know, they're very heavy. And uh, as my, as uh, as Dad used to say when he he talked about somebody that was not quite, uh, you know, as smart as they should be, he was always said they were thick as a Norai, uh, and that was <laughs> I like, yeah, thick as a Norai. So. Um, I hope he was. Yeah, I just he could, I, I, talking, he could be talking about me, uh, Phil, at times, but I don't know. <laughs> anyway, well, I, I don't. Uh, I, I don't think that. But uh, I, I think that uh, you know that might be a, a good transition. That uh, I, I think that you know, judging by some of the comments on social media, that uh, there there may be uh, some folks out there that are a bit thick as a Nori when it comes to uh, understanding the. Fun Finances of Accrington Stanley, if you will. Yeah, before before we get into that, because I, I, once I get going, I might get a bit worked up on that. But when uh, before we do you that, Phil, I just want to. Sorry, am I going to get, get you dust off, cheesed off? You, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Get that, get that oh, okay. ready because that's off. all right. Yeah, back, back um, to the, the day. <laughs> some some housekeeping items that I just want to uh, to. Uh, put out there, Phil, um, and uh, one of them is off the bat is the uh, sponsored walks that that happened on the weekend, um, and uh, the groups from uh, Bolton uh, Stadium walked about 21, 22 miles, and uh, uh, Darren Woodhead uh, was a part of that, and a good f- good friend of the show, Gary Demain, uh did that, and. Uh, he pulled up a bit lame, right? He made it, but he got a, a heck of a blister on his foot. Oh, and, man. Uh, and the trooper, he, he, he is, he made it. So, uh, the, And then there was a Jim Curtis that was in that group. Uh, congratulations to all that group. And, of course, we other, there was another. And Peter Latham, I sorry, I should say, uh, excellent job uh, as usual. And he was in that group. The other group came from Turf Moor. And uh, walked, uh, I think it was about seven, eight miles to the WAM Stadium. Um, so a great effort by all all involved. And the money raised is going to towards um, um, a f- facility for Alcoholics Anonymous uh, to meet with. And, uh, who, and, and our that good was friend. inspired by the, the Chris Grimshaw uh, episode. Yes, exactly. And that's uh, and that's how I re released that again. And we I know we've done it two or three times, but it's such a good story and 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 the uh, the cause that they 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 walk for. So um, all the all this congratulations the to the fourth fourth year of doing the walk now thir- third or fourth. It's uh, it could be Phil. I I don't I don't want to say. What I, I just know it's gotten bigger every year, and I, I know yeah. uh, Darren he just does a tremendous job. Uh, yeah, working behind the scenes with that, and then you know, of course, uh, Peter Latham. I mean, anything that he's yeah. involved with is going to be a class A one. <laughs> I mean, he uh, well, and that and that leads me on to uh, with Darren is that. He re- he's released a couple of episodes. It's actually one episode that is number one episode oh. on his uh, new podcast, uh, My Football Life, which is uh, on his YouTube channel. And he did David Lloyd, and it's, it's an excellent to watch and listen. So, if, uh, all the best to Darren in that in that ed- uh, his venture on that. And uh, I I was I was involved in the pilot yeah. episode, but. Um, I've certainly, I, all I can, my claim to fame at this point, Phil, is that he's done two episodes and I'm in second place. So, that's <laughs> for, <laughs> but uh, all the best. Hey, t- tough competition there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you can't beat Bumble. You can't beat, beat David Lloyd. Um, well, I'll, thing I'll I- listen to you twice and, and Bumble Woods to try to help, help out a little bit. <laughs> and, and before I forget, there's a, there's a, a person that I deal with at Stanley for. When I come over, I, I try to go into hospitality and 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 the money that I was spending a year, I try and 
at the club. I try and spend that if I can in the in the three two or three months I'm here. And the lady in there that, to, that I deal with, the uh, uh, Sophie Jones is now Sophie Quigley. She got married two or three weeks ago. Um, Sophie is 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 a credit to the club and just an absolute star. And if anybody wants to go into the hospitality, um, uh, contact Sophie. She's a, she is a gem. And and the hospitality shown to me and my wife uh, by Handy Alt and Dave Burgess is uh, second to none. And uh, uh, I appreciate that. But having said that, we will we will talk later on about some of the things that we we. Um, uh, I think need to be addressed from the football point of view. But anyway, just just on those points, I wanted to get that out, out of the way, and now we can get into the, the nitty gritty. So, what what do you want to go first? And, and like, uh, well, well, just to kind of follow up on what you were saying, I mean, that uh, you know, excellent uh, kind of summary of, of different things that have been going on. But I just wanted to kind of say two things that uh, things like that sponsored walk day it really shows how Accrington Stanley is about so much more than just football and, and it's really part of the community. And, uh, you know, the, the people behind the scenes, like so Sophie quickly, uh, I know that uh, I've seen that, that she's been uh, with Accrington at least as long as I've been following the team. And it, it's definitely uh, one of the, the unsung heroes behind the scenes. And uh, we, we definitely should try to get her on the show soon. Yeah, it's, uh, we'll um, we'll see how she feels about this. She's very shy, but very accommodating. So, and the other the other thing I wanted to just uh, mention was uh, um, uh, a shout out to uh, Bryn Tracy, who's been on the show, <laughs> yeah, coach at the the women's Stanley uh, Akron Stanley Women's uh, Club, doing a terrific job. And uh, 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 if I check out them on Facebook because he's very good with the social media. Uh, the last match, they played their home matches at Padium, very close to Accrington, uh, and they even put on a bus from Accrington to run the fans free of charge from Accrington to, to the football ground and they play on Sunday. So if anybody uh, uh, wants to watch a good uh, calibre football uh, on a Sunday afternoon, uh, give uh, Bryn's team a, a watch and give them all your support. So that's, we'll talk uh, about uh, we'll talk about this more later. But if you are yeah. uh, looking to follow the ladies' team more, then uh, you're already at the right place. Uh, we're going to be talking about it a little bit more later. But uh, on across the pitch, we're definitely going to be increasing our coverage of the uh, the ladies' team over the next uh, few months and going forward. Uh, we already have some interviews lined up that we'll talk about later, but. Uh, you know, with, with across the pitch, one of the things we're uh, looking to do here and have always looked to do is tell the complete story of Accrington Stanley. And, and thus far, we've done a great job on the history and the, the first team. Uh, but we're looking to uh, add not only the, the ladies team, but also coverage of the youth team and academies and, uh, you know, really cover the uh, the complete package that is Accrington Stanley. Uh, we have a ton of great interviews coming up. And uh, Peter Latham, uh, who we mentioned earlier, is uh, is working with us to uh, to help get those set up. So I'm I'm really excited to uh, to learn more about the uh, the ladies team. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and I'm looking forward to that too, uh, Phil, because it is it is coming on leaps and bounds that they're doing well within their division. Um, and they're, they're, as I say, they are uh, making themselves uh, uh, noticed and, and Bryn is doing not only an excellent job on the pitch, but also promoting the club. So any support we can give them uh, from our end and, and from people in the area, then uh, let's do it. So, um, Phil, we, I just when we before we get into the social media and things that have gone mm -hmm. on, um, I'll just sort of touch on uh, the last three matches. Yeah, yeah, um, that's uh, that's what I was going to say. So, so when you uh, when, yeah. when you first excuse me when you first got over to uh, to the UK, uh, Accrington was on uh, a little bit of a skid, uh, and then they kind of hit a uh, a hot streak. Uh, we had some wins at, at Cheltenham, uh, Bristol, Morecambe uh, was the big rivalry win. Yeah. Uh, but since then, uh, things have struggled. Uh, 
Uh, so, so let's uh, you know just kind of go match by match. We're not going to do a deep review, but uh, you know, what are some of the things that you've seen at each match? I'm just going to sit back and uh, you you tell us about each match and what you've seen so far. Well, I'll I'll touch on mostly the two last two home matches because uh, I was there in the in the in the ground uh, and watching it, and and the one thing I like is that you know you know you can you can. Watch, you can see whatever you want to see as far as uh, with iFollow, you've got the one camera angle and that's it. Where um, when you're there, you can uh, look off the ball and see where people are, are positioned and things like that. What's going on with the coaching staff who's warming up and, and all, all things like that. Um, you know, one of the things we have to keep in mind is uh, the two home matches uh, and, of course, uh, the one last night. We're playing um, uh, big teams uh, in the Bolton and, and Derby County, uh, former Premier League teams with big following, a big big fan support, uh, and Peterborough that have a sort of a yo-yo team between the Championship and uh, um, and League One. Um, I think if you look at uh, the Bolton match, um, uh, yeah, let's do the Bolton match. I mean. Um, as far as, um, uh, you know, yes, the score was, uh, 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 when you, when you're up to nothing, you, you yeah. lose to, it's heartbreaking, but when you yeah, look at I mean, the, that's something we've talked about a lot is, you know, yeah. so, something about that two O lead. It's just, it's precarious. I feel like when you get that second goal and you get up two O that you, you almost get a false sense of security. Uh, and then once the other team gets one back, then suddenly they have the momentum. If they get another quick one, like what happened here, all of a sudden the game is tied and the, the other club has all of the momentum. I mean, and this is something that, that you see a lot in football, but probably even more in ice hockey. Well, but the thing is on, the, on that match is um, Bolton had 19 attempts uh, at goal, seven on target. Stanley had 14 and six on target. Um, they, they, the home goal that give them the other team, uh, Bolton, back in, the, in 2-1, uh, that was a tough, tough one, uh, a tough break to, to, to have. Um but one of the things that um, disappointed me at, in that match was not what was happening on the pitch. It was it was the reaction of the Bolton fans and and some of the conduct of some of the fans. And now there was probably twenty six hundred there, and it would be it could be a handful of of them that were sort of making it uh, a spoiler for the rest. But there was two or three examples that usually, I usually usually it's yeah. always uh, the, the few bad apples. That, but uh, it's not it. Yeah, but Phil, when I saw it, wasn't just it wasn't just the uh, young lads on the, on the booze. It was it was people of all ages, and and and, and there was an example in the in the hospitality lounge where. Uh, uh, people can can order a drink at half time. You leave it on the table, and then you can come back and, and finish it afterwards or later on. Uh, some people who were or, or who did that went back in, and the and the, the drinks had, uh, had been finished by uh, Bolton fans that were in the in the hospitality, which is you know totally out of line. And there was other yeah. examples in in the college bar, especially of- yeah with COVID and stuff. I mean, you know, people- well, that's not only that, Phil. It's, it's it's just not on. Well, no, of course. I'm just saying that, that even even more so with uh, with uh, the spread yeah, of germs. And yeah, but like it, that. To, to me, that's it's it's not. You know, it's just you sh- you just don't do that. And then there was an example in the Coley's bar where they had a couple of uh, people taken out. But they they the fans that I was sitting near um, and and. You know, well, not young young kids by any means, but when the when they were sco- when they scored, it was not. It was you'd think they uh, they'd won the FA Cup, and it, and yet you, you have to remind you have to, almost have to remind these these people that you're you're playing at Quinton Stanley at the Wham Stadium, and there's a good good chance, uh, and, and I'm saying this to all the Bolton fans. There's a good chance that you'll be in League One next year, a very good chance. And for the some that were sort of over the top and obnoxious, um, get rid of that sense of entitlement because uh, you're in League One for a reason. 
Um, and as I say, there's a very good chance you'll be there next season. But as far as on the pitch, the quality of the, their substitutions outweighed uh, the the substitutions that Stanley could make. So, and that's the same right. for the, for the for the Derby match. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the substitutions that could be made, the quality in these clubs are deeper because of the budgets. Um, and so it's um, trying to compete with 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 those. I mean, for for most part, uh, and in that uh, Derby match, if McConnell scores those penalties. It's a different it's a different ball game. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah then, and then on, on Bolton, second half they cleared off, I cleared off the the ball off the line once or twice in that in that scurry in the in in the uh, in the net. Um, that goes in. It's three nothing, and, and there's no way it's going to be a, a, a three two loss. Um, I think what people fans are 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 for, forgetting is um, we're 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 close, but. Because of the budget, we don't have the depth. Hmm. This 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 leads me on to some of the criticism that's been leveled at at the uh, the, the coaching staff of not it, bringing. Is, it, is this where you're going to get cheesed off? Oh yeah, I'm going to get cheesed. Oh, okay, off. cheesed off. The I forgot where I was cheesed off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the you know the the, the fans want to see. Uh, the subs come on and they're, they're pissed off at, uh, at John Coleman uh, and his staff are not bringing them on sooner. Um, the one thing that, and, and then they, they're saying these people don't have, are not given a chance because they're coming on late. I think what people have to understand and realize is that um, uh, Nathan uh, Del Finesso um, was signed uh two or three, four weeks ago. He didn't have a club. He was training on his own. He's not, he was not in, in shape or match shape. And, and he, it's his preseason. So it's going to take four to six weeks for him to get up to, up to snuff, so to speak. And, and it's That's the same. Apl- point there. Yeah. And it's the same for, um, um, uh, say and, uh, um, and Cody, um, they're both. Com- they're all. They're all coming back from. Well, those two are coming back from injuries. You can't just expect them to get on the pitch soon as they're, they're on the bench and, and expect them to make a difference. Am I happy with the timing of the substitutions? No, I'm not. I think uh, he. Um, uh, I think he could do them sooner. So there is criticisms of John Coleman or opinions that I have. Of John oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah. the, for for instance, you, you mentioned the the two missed penalties by McConville. I I would say the biggest uh, single decision that I have disagreed with this year was sending McConville out a uh, second time. I just that that quickly after missing a penalty against the exact same goalkeeper, um, I. I definitely would have had somebody else take the shot that day. It was clear that it was in his head because the second time around, he tried to do the same shot that he did the first time, but he just tried to do it better. And instead, he tried to do too fine with it and miss the net altogether. I mean, it was it was just clear. I mean, the, the keeper obviously had seen tape on him that the keeper was definitely going left. I mean, to me, the thing to do would have been, you know, the keeper's going left, maybe try to go right this time. Uh, but, but I mean, to me, you, you just don't send a guy out there who has just missed a penalty. I mean, it, it's going to be in his hat. Well, and yeah, I, I, I agree with that. It, it's the, um, but it's, it's where the way the fans are, are um, uh, uh, especially after uh, this, uh, the Saturday match. And then of course, after last night is that they're saying changes need to be made. Um, but yet it, uh, but don't really have any. That's set, ridiculous. Set so, I mean, the- or the, or the one, the, the one's, you know, when it said changes need to be made and, and said, well, changes need, need, you know, we have to put the strikers on them and, and make change the subs um, sooner. I, 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 I think that's a valid point, but only if your subs are ready um, to go. We don't, we don't see them training day in and day. Out. Right. Right. We I don't mean- know if they're match fit. And if, and if they're not, 
if they're not ready to go, then yeah, you've got to ease them in. But uh, I, yeah, at, at some point, it, uh, and let's use Mitch Clark for an example. Mitch Clark sat on the bench for two to three months before he got a chance. Then he got in the team and he he got that chance. He took it and, and made that position his own. Um, there's going to be changes this weekend because uh, of the yellow cards. So Tharm is out. Mm-hmm. And so is um, That's Liam a Coyle. Big loss. I mean, he, he's been our best player since he's come over. Uh, well, one of the things too, and, and this is where um, the back four has been steady, but the last three, three or four matches, when they've made a mistake, it's cost them. Uh, and and if you look at some of the highlights, it's uh, and and Harvey Rogers has played. I mean, they've all played well, but collectively as a group, sometimes if they make one mistake, they've got punished, and and that's happened a few times in the last two or three matches. And I think um, we have to remember those two were uh, Doug Tharm uh, and uh, Astley. Um, they're on loan. They're very they're young players. They're playing in football league for the first time, uh, and right, they've right. Been, They've done a tremendous job, but um, it's they're gonna they're gonna have a down spell and they're gonna have a rough patch, um, and 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 also when you look at, at Tommy Lee, I noticed when I watched him on Saturday, uh, like he he has got tons of talent and he'll he'll run all day long, and that's one of the things that John Coleman wants his strikers to do is to chase everything down. By doing that, though, you can run out of steam in that 75th, 80th minute kind of thing. And that that's the time where you've got to read that. And, I, and that's John and Jimmy's uh, responsibility is to find or to see that when it's coming to make the change and make it sooner rather than, than later. And that's the one the one thing I would say on that. But Tommy Lee, uh, he's, he's not a... Uh, He's still he's still growing physically into his into the position. He's not an actual centre. We all we all know that. Is he better in in the in the sort of a number ten role? I I would I would think so. But he he physically can get uh, pushed off the ball by the centre backs in League One because there's some big bruisers back there in League One, and they're oh yeah, uh, and they're and they're knocking him about. But Cisse is one that I think could improve that position. Once he's uh, he's uh, he's hundred percent and gets in there, you know, hopefully he'll he'll make that position his own, and and maybe we'll go away from the four one four one formation or mm-hmm. whether where uh, or the four three three with then McConville and Sean Wally and Tommy Lee in the middle, you know, maybe when the t- the strikers are more healthy and there's a better choice, maybe the four four two they will be a will be a better option, but. Um, just to start criticizing um, uh, the coaching staff be, uh, and saying changes have to be made. If the, if the subs aren't able to contribute, Coleman's not going to bring them on. And I think it just, it's, it's just, they're, they're not, they're just not match fit and be able to, to do what John Coleman wants them to do. Right. I mean, you, you made the, the biggest point is that, uh, you know, we're not at training. We don't know, uh, you know, what they're doing in training, who is still working back from injuries, who is match fit, who isn't match fit. All, all of those things are are things that uh, are, are going to factor into the lineup. The other thing is, I, I mean, I think in, in some ways that uh, it's difficult to uh, put all of the the blame on the, the coaching staff to begin with when, you know, ultimately this is a club that has sold off a lot of players. Now, it, maybe some criticism could be placed to have we sold off too many guys. Now, then the question is, financially, did we have to? I'm thinking that, you know, chances are that if we're selling somebody that, you know, that's a move that the, the club has to make to, uh, uh, you know, look at the future and be able to make the payroll work and, and things like that. I mean, but, you know, especially from the striker position, uh, from the center back position, uh, you know, a, a lot of the the top quality starting players that have been there the past couple of years uh, are gone, and and it's it's a bit of a a patchwork at this point where uh, you know John Coleman is having to play a lot of guys out of position simply because he doesn't have any other options. 
Well, and and when you mention uh, the selling off of players, I mean, that is uh, it's an acknowledge uh, an acknowledgement from the ownership. Uh, that is that is a, uh, a revenue stream. That's an important part of the revenue coming to the club, and so is the uh, the uh, hospitality uh, and college bar. Um, uh, there's there's a lot of revenue coming into the club, but I must say it's it's not it's not making them richer over the top. But I'm saying it's it's now an important part of the revenue stream. Uh, 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 you know, in addition to uh, yeah, ticket to sales. be able to, uh, to maybe not have to sell those players in the future. Well, and 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 they so it is the model is that they they find them, they develop them, and they sell them on. Um, they had great luck with Caden Jackson and with uh, and and Dion Charles. Obviously, uh, could have made them some money if he'd have. Uh, uh, um, Right, uh, right. honored that his means. words, and and I was asked by a, a ball fan before the match. Do you think Dion Charles will will get some stick from the the Stanley fans? And I said, yes, he will. Uh, oh, why? And I said, well, because he down tools and he really done his uh, his uh, obligations to the club. And I said, I, he's definitely going to get some stick. And I said, I think it's um, as long as he's done respectfully, he's going. It, it's it's some it's something that I think. Uh, He's going to get because warranted, the, yeah. The way, yeah, it's warranted. Absolutely. Uh, but those of us and, and Kobe Bishop, it's the people they're bringing in now. They need it's uh, we're at sta- that stage where they're not totally developed and ready to be sold on. I mean, Tony right. Lee is not ready to be sold on to a next to the, to the next level. Um, but I think an important thing to remember or, or look at now is that in the last four or five years, and we've talked about it, we've beaten this to death, but it's 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 the money that Andy Holt has has come has put has been has been coming in is reinvested in the infrastructure of the club. And we know now, and as I say, that's we don't have to go over that. It's it's uh, it's made a strength of the club. But now it's I think it's time now you can look at the fact that if there's money coming in extra it doesn't have to go into the infrastructure. It can now go into mm-hmm. um, uh, to John Coleman's um, a budget uh, for bringing in, in players. And I don't mean they're going to sign, uh, go over the hill. They're going to still try to find, uh, you know, gem. yeah. But there be they might be able to compete with some of the some other the teams that uh, a, a player might say, well, I'm going to go play for Morecambe because I'm going to get an extra few quid. Um, you know, this this um, this might now be a position, a time where there could be an investment into the playing staff. So I'm and as a, because of that, I'm not I'm not ready to write off uh, the, the the season. I think though I think they will be in League One next next year. I'm not yeah, that's going to the- that that to me that that's the only thing that matters at the end of the day is twentieth place or better survival. That's the goal, um, and this is where I think when people get personal or talk about John Coleman uh, uh, just sitting on the on the railings, uh, not doing anything during the match, not motivating the players. Um, John Coleman's style has always been to sit on the on the side railing by the dugout. That's always been his style. If he does do any yelling, it's generally the fourth official, and 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 sometimes it's warranted. Uh, but as far as yelling at the players, time. yeah. But as far as we don't see what he does in the changing rooms before uh, for his pre-match speech or a halftime uh, or what is said afterwards. Um, when and you and I know that the one. I mean, Jim on the, Bell is the one making a lot of the yeah. match adjustments too. Well, I mean, that's, that's I think. I think that's the fact. I think. I think that's one of the things that people have got to realize when it comes to the positioning, uh, or a movement of the players, or a readjustment of the formation. That's coming from Jimmy Bell and John Doolan. John Coleman is looking at the overall view, and he might be saying to Jimmy Bell, "We need to change this. Who have you got? What's you know? Let's bring so and so. Let's cha- make this formation." And Jimmy Bell will communicate communicate it to the pe- uh, people on the field. But as far as saying that John Coleman doesn't motivate uh, the players because he sits on, on the, on the, uh, on the railing um, is ludicrous because either you don't understand the sport or you're just, or, or you're just uh, uh, looking for somebody to blame because 
uh, as you and I know, the motivation is not generally on the pitch. It's it's before to get them ready before they walk out of the of the changing rooms onto the pitch. You've got, that's the motivation time, not not when they're uh, twenty minutes into the uh, into All the right. game. You can you can be a cheerleader, but you're not motivating them at that, that, that point. But to, I mean, to me, the 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 only proof I need is how many show, how many players have we had come out of the show who have uh, word for word said, you know, we're going to run through a brick wall yep. for uh, John Coleman. I mean, you, you know, I mean. That says it right there. I mean, he he motivates his guys. I mean, he wouldn't have had the success that he has. He wouldn't have a club pushing above its weight for twenty years if if he didn't have them motivated. Well, I I think that you know there there's a lot of folks that that just need a bit of a history lesson or a, a understanding of where Accrington stands compared to some of these other clubs. I mean, when you're talking about a, a Derby County, for instance, I mean, this a few years ago would have been considered one of the biggest clubs in all of England. Well, we have to remember we're Accrington Stanley, we're in League One, uh, and we're going for the most part. Uh, we're holding our own and uh, against some of these top teams and we're falling short because of the depth of the squad and the quality of the players. Um, and John Coleman works wonders with what he's got. Can As he make mistakes, yes, can he do better? Of course he can. Uh, of course. And we, oh, we've talked about that, but as yeah, far we'll just, as... Uh, I'll, I'll actually bring another one. I don't... I, this is something I wanted to ask you about. I don't necessarily know that I completely agree with uh, uh, the goalkeeping situation. Uh, do you know, is, is Jensen hurt, or uh, are they just trying to give Savin some time? Because, I mean, when I, I look at the numbers, I, I mean, Jensen has outplayed Savin by quite quite a margin. Well, uh, yeah, and that's, I, as far as I know, no, he's not injured. Um, I think it's a, it's a move that John Coleman has done in the past with, with his goalkeepers. He'll bring a change, not necessarily um, um, because one's played poorly. He'll just make that, he'll make that move. And to be fair to Toby Savin, he's made some, tremendous saves in the last two home matches um, that, um, uh, you know, I think you were, you were looking at certain goals, but he's, he's made, uh, he's made saves. So I'm not, yeah, I'm not, I'm not knocking, uh, knocking Toby Savit at all. We, uh, we, we've seen him for years. We know he's a great, uh, great goalkeeper. I, I'm just strictly looking at the numbers, like for his his save percentage, uh, he had since at 67%, Savit's at 57%. Goals against per 90, Jensen's at 1.33, Savitz at three even. So I, I'm just strictly looking at the numbers. Yeah, and I think those are a bit, bit misleading because Savin's been in for these losses. And I think that's, uh, as I say, I'm, I wouldn't, uh, I think that's just sort of. Um, uh, that, that's an excellent right point. I mean, it, it's yeah. been tough competition. I mean, Savin's three uh, three matches have been uh, Peterborough, uh, Bolton, and uh, Derby County. So that that's an excellent point. He he hasn't had an easy game in there at all. But the um, um, the one thing when when somebody suggests uh, a change uh, needs to be made. And they're referring to the to to John Coleman. Um, that's an opinion, their opinion, and, and certainly if uh, they're entitled to it, and if you go watch the match and you pay your ticket, you're entitled to to voice that. Even if you're a fan and you you you, you follow the club, you're entitled to that. But um, it's um uh, it's uh, it, it's a sprint. <laughs> it's you know there's there's 46 matches. Uh, teams, especially like Stanley, that are, are not as deep quality-wise, they're going to go into uh, 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 a tailspin. Uh, but to come in, come out and say um, changes have to be made. Uh, my question in is, October, is, especially. Well, who, so. but but Phil, who's going to who who can who's going to come in? For for the salary that Coleman is on, well, and, exactly. and do a better job. It's not going to happen. And right, people, that's what it I changes. Said. I just think it's it. It, if, it, if I could get Jose Mourinho. Yeah. Well, uh, somebody comes in, and I, I just don't. It, you don't get rid 
of uh, John Coleman that's got four promotions in him and knows knows the game because he's and he's not gonna he's not gonna set his line up or make changes because of what the fans say. He's gonna do what the best for uh, best for the club, put the best eleven out he can that that he has available that are healthier and who can contribute. Um, so to to but when people say they want him out, but they have no, they there's no they don't come back and say well I think so and so would do a better job because if somebody has a, a a suggestion and you look at it and well that you know that's not a bad idea he he uh, he's a good manager good history yes but um, you've got to be a special manager to come in at Stanley uh, and because John or Andy Alt wants somebody to come in if they do ever have to replace John Combe he wants somebody that's going to be in for for three four five six years he doesn't want the merry-go-round and having to pay contracts for, uh, you know, having two or three people on garden leave because, uh, you know, he didn't like the, you know, the results for four or five matches. So I think, uh, yeah. I, think the, I think the criticism a bit right now is a bit harsh, especially when they don't have a solution. So that, that, More than that, a piss, bit, that, piss, mean. that pisses me off, Phil. So, uh, <laughs> so, so let me, there, there's two, two kind of things I want to touch on here. So the one I would say, and, and tell me what you think about this statement. I would say that to me, John Coleman has earned that he would at least have to see through an entire season and be relegated before even considering having him re- be replaced. He, to me, he's earned that he would have to actually see through a relegation before Andy would sit down and say, okay, maybe there's time to make a change. I think four promotions should have at least earned him that. Yeah, I agree. And I think, and he, he said, if he loses the desire for the game and, and, and to coach, coach, uh, manage Stanley, then he'll he'll quit, and he hasn't lost that desire, so he's earned that right, and uh, uh, he'll know when it's time to go, and so will uh, Andy Holt. So as of as of now, uh, it's not going to happen. So I think instead of criticizing uh, and saying he should be replaced without any suggestions, I think we should just leave that one, leave that uh, alone, and and uh, uh, and give him support, and if he makes him a decision that we don't agree with as far as time and the subs. Yeah. Question it. And, and by all means do that because that's, that's every friend's right to do that. That's part of being a football fan is question yep. the, the decisions. And yep. I mean, I, yep. I don't think that John Coleman would have uh, any problem with, with somebody saying, you know, I, I would have started player X or Y, you know, he might say, well, I'm the manager and player Y is starting for a reason and he's yep. probably going to be right. But, Everybody has a right to uh, their opinion, and, and discussing it is part of what uh, what makes things fun. That being said, uh, the second thing I wanted to ask you about is, uh, to me, I think that in, in football, in, in English football, in soccer, uh, in general, not just in England, but, but basically in uh, any uh, association football league that I, I call it the sack the gaffer culture. And I feel like the sack the gaffer culture, it exists in American sports, but not anywhere near. I mean, it just seems like, you know, obviously you watch the NBA or the NFL or baseball or whatever, and, you know, teams will go down. And the first thing people will say is fire the manager. But not nearly as quickly as in in soccer. It just seems like uh, sack the gaffer. I mean, I I know you know like Chelsea is famous for it. It's just it's oh, Watford. Part of the <laughs> part, part of the culture of football almost, and it's it's something I don't like, and it's something that you know honestly seeing here. Uh, a uh, situation with Phoenix Rising where uh, Rick Schatz, who had been the long coach of Phoenix Rising, had been very successful. And then, uh, you know, this year they had their first bad season in, in five years. And, you know, it only took half of a bad season before you have TIFOs in the stands, get rid of shots and things like that. And I just, I, I mean, I just think that at some point these guys have, have earned a little bit more respect than this. Well, it's hard. It's it's uh, at the end of the day, Phil. It's not our decision. It's it's uh, Andy Holt's decision, and uh, Andy Holt uh, 
uh, as uh, total faith in uh, uh, in John Coleman. So as far as I'm concerned, uh, that's it. And, and as as they say in uh, in in Coleman, we trust, and that's uh, I'm willing to do that. And and you know, that's to, talk talking about uh, all this and that is just. Uh, it's got me to the point where I, I hate to say this, Phil, but I'm after I'm going to have to go to the pub tonight and have a pint because I'm I'm just pissed <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah, I mean it. Uh, you know, I I think it's people have short memories. I think that uh, you know I I still consider myself a new fan in some ways as I started following the club in 2018, and you know certainly compared to. Uh, yourself or or Darren, I'm a new fan, but uh, there's there's fans that are far newer than I am, and you know if if this is your first or uh, second year watching the club, then first and foremost, welcome to the Accrington Stanley family. We are uh, uh, thrilled to have you on board, uh, but I think that, that maybe some of these newer fans just don't quite uh, first understand. Uh, how much John Coleman uh, has been a part of them, even being where they're out in the first place. And secondly, uh, just uh, how unlevel the playing field is and what uh, an uphill battle it is to even just stay in League One from year to year. And and before before we wrap up, Phil, I, the one person I wanted to uh, uh, give a shout out to is a friend of the show, uh, is Rob Russell because um, we interviewed Rob a, a while back and he and, and I remember he saying he said Tony when you're over there'll be a pint uh, waiting on the bar f- for you and and uh, he, I, I, he's a man of his word and 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 the other night at the question answer session he bought me a pint and we sat and had a, a, a wonderful chat um, and um, uh, a, a great lad. So thanks, uh, thanks, Rob. And he did say, "When are we, we going to get Phil over?" And I said, "Well, he will come over at one point." And I said, uh, uh, "Then we'll have a few, uh, a few pints." So thanks, Rob. And um, uh, Phil, the the ball's over to you. But to say, I've I've given you a hint. <laughs> the hint is, I'm ready to go for a pint. So if you want to wrap it up, I'll let you do the honors. Well, yeah, I uh, I will let you get to your point, and thank you, uh, Rob, for always being a huge supporter of the show, uh, sending in questions for our uh, our guests. Uh, I think uh, some of our best questions have always come from Rob, and uh, I definitely uh, I cannot wait to uh, to eventually make my way across the pond. It's uh, it's already been too long, and uh, once I get there, uh, an Aki Ale is definitely one of the uh, First things on my agenda. Uh, that being said, it's been a great chat, Tony, and uh, I think that uh, you know, in spite of recent results, that uh, the outlook uh, is going to still be strong. Uh, I think that we will have uh, another season in League One next year. Uh, I think we will continue to trust in John Coleman. Uh, hopefully, uh, the January window will bring us a striker. I, I think that could go uh, a huge long way. Uh, but uh, otherwise, uh, on Stanley on. Yes, and I'll see you. Well, I won't see you back when I'm North America, but I'll uh, talk to you when I'm uh, when I'm back in uh, the good old uh, country of Canada. <laughs> yeah, we'll absolutely uh, be looking forward to that. And, and once you get back to Canada, uh, we have some great guests coming up. We mentioned the uh, the ladies team earlier that we're going to be uh, stepping up coverage on that. Uh, on November 10th, we have a gentleman named uh, Heath Groves, who is uh, heavily involved with the uh, the women's team uh, that's going to be coming on to uh, to talk to us then. Uh, that was an interview that was arranged by Peter Latham. So uh, thanks again to uh, to Peter for uh, everything that you do. Uh, and, uh, and Tony, thank you for uh, for joining me today and uh, catching up on all of the uh, uh, happenings in and about the, uh, the Wham Stadium. And uh, enjoy your point. And on Stanley on. On Stanley on, Phil. Talk to you soon. Cheers, mate. Cheers, Tony. Have a great one. 